I am Rachel Moreau. I'm vice president of the Historic Murray First Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit that we formed to try to advocate for and to save what uh, we have of our historic fabric in Murray. I'm really grateful. Um, thank you for letting us have this opportunity today, Council and Mayor and, and staff. It's a great opportunity to be here, and we're excited to talk with you today. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking of is, as we watch um, communities around us change their face uh, that they've had for decades and update and revitalize, I was thinking about revitalization in a couple of ways. Yes, it can be new construction, it can be new development, but to revitalize your hometown, which Murray is to so many people, um, is to respect its history and to do that, to do updates sensitively. Um, so we're thinking in terms of making Murray the destination hometown for all of Salt Lake Valley. We also are here to talk to and answer some common myths around what historic preservation really means and what it does and what it does not do for um, cities and for property owners. Uh, we'd like to also detail some of the resources um, on all levels, federal, state, and local, that are available to help um, to help Murray really protect the historic buildings and the surrounding and have the infill development that comes in um, harmonize and um, really blend in and honor what we have now and create a welcoming character and atmosphere for Murray citizens. Um, and I will turn the time over to our president, Amy Thomas, who will talk about the data and the issues in detail. Thanks, Rachel. Today, I'd like to encourage you to prioritize historic preservation in Murray. We can address future growth strategically while also reflecting the desires of the community. Our goal is to create a better city for the residents of Murray and future generations, to create healthy lifestyles, increase jobs and incomes, efficiently use our infrastructure, grow our economy, create a positive city image, supply quality affordable housing, and work towards a sustainable future. It is cost effective, and it makes sense to invest in our existing historic downtown buildings and neighborhoods. There are numerous benefits and preservation provides the means for cities like ours to hold on to the character that makes us unique and economically robust, while rising to the challenges that the 21st century presents. It's the mix of old and new buildings working together to fashion dense, walkable, and thriving streets that helps us achieve a more prosperous, sustainable, and healthier future for Murray. There are many benefits of historic preservation, but today I'm going to discuss affordable housing, density, walkability, sustainability, local economy, and just touch on a little bit of what those things can do for our future. And its very essence, historic preservation lends itself to housing affordability. Older buildings are very often well equipped to provide affordable housing because they were actually designed to hold multiple families and uses. That is why all across America right now, creative adaptive reuse projects are converting historic schools warehouses, old homes, and other buildings into houses for those in need. Community and civic supported historic district designations mean fewer demolitions of affordable housing stock and displacement of residents and construction of new housing that is no longer affordable. One of the most startling statistics is that 32% of households below the poverty line live in older and historic homes. These are people in our community who are put at risk when we destroy the housing made affordable without substantial subsidies. Density is another important contributor to affordability, and historic districts are typically the densest districts in urbanized areas across the nation. In a recent analysis across the U.S., in 43 of 50 cities, the average population density was greater in historic district neighborhoods compared to modern neighborhoods. In Salt Lake City, the density score for neighborhoods of historic and smaller buildings was 65.1 compared to a density score of only 23.4 in neighborhoods of newer and more modern buildings. Historic neighborhoods have more than twice the population density. 
This is because density and accommodating many residents does not have to mean large mid-rise buildings wrapping around parking garages. Murray's original subdivisions were built to accommodate large families on small plots. There are plenty of ways to increase density and affordability um, in cities that don't involve destroying the historic fabric of our communities. One reasonable alternative between the huge apartment complex and the single family home, often referred to as the missing middle or hidden density, are duplexes, courtyard apartments, and townhomes. And all over America, preservation projects are expanding housing options, helping cities become more affordable and demonstrating that history, sustainability, fairness, and economic vitality can go hand in hand. Historic preservation districts are one of our best tools for preserving density and smart, vibrant growth. Historic preservation also lends itself to walkability. Before the introduction of the automobile, cities and towns were naturally built on a human scale. As cars grew in popularity, urban planners all over the US chose to prioritize interstates, parking lots, and large-scale developments. A walk score is a numeric ranking that represents the walkability of an address based on pedestrian friendliness and access to businesses. At present, Murray scores a 39 out of 100 on walk score's walkability meter, making it a very car-dependent city. Walkability is much more than infrastructure. In a truly walkable city, you can satisfy a wide variety of needs within 15 minutes on foot. You can buy food, take in a player show, shop, and enjoy a green space such as a park or public trail. 50% of residents currently report walkability as a top or high priority when considering where to live. Recent research has shown that in cities across the US, historic neighborhoods overwhelmingly have a higher walk score than the city average as a whole. As a side benefit, historic buildings also provide two amenities to which pedestrians are drawn, sunlight and scale. Because older buildings are shorter than new buildings, they usually provide more sunlight to the street, and because they are smaller in scale, people feel comfortable walking in and around them. Historic preservation and climate sustainability are also natural partners. Bulldozing our existing buildings to replace them just isn't necessary. Historic preservation conserves resources, reduces waste, and saves money by repairing and reusing our existing buildings instead of tearing them down and building new ones. The amount of waste that goes into landfills when eliminating historic buildings is an important factor to consider when evaluating environmental responsibility. To put these environmental factors into context, when a decision is made to demolish just one modestly sized house in Utah, and replace it with a new one, 350 tons of waste is generated for the landfill. That is as much waste as one person would generate in 445 years, while just rehabilitating that same house would generate only 50 tons of waste. Our built environment is full of meaningful historic buildings desperately in need of green updates. Among the various types of green building projects, adaptive reuse is the one that makes special sense from a standpoint of embodied energy. Adaptive reuse is sustainable and also helps with affordable housing and density. As Carl Elefante said, the greenest building is the one that already exists. According to recent data, the past 10 years have shown an all-time high in old buildings being converted into apartments, with around 800 projects completed. In addition, 65% of those projects were targeted to low and middle income residents. We would love to see the Harker Building adapted into low income housing on the upper floors and commercial options on the ground level. Not only would this provide additional density downtown, but it would maintain desirable sunlit sidewalks while drawing pedestrians into a comfortable shopping experience with a locally owned business. Development, as we all know, is driven by profit and tearing down existing buildings to build new is often viewed as a more affordable option over preservation and rehabilitation. However, studies have actually found that even if there's no demolition of a current building required, a commercial rehab project generally has a cost savings of about 4%. If, on the other hand, a new construction project includes the cost of raising an existing building, the cost savings will range from 3 to 16%. I have charted these savings here. So you can see on that straight line illustrating our control, which is the new construction. 
This top line is the cost savings expected when there's no demolition required. You can see in some cases it may cost as much as 9% more than new construction, but the average is that it costs 4% less. This bottom line is the average cost savings when demolition of an existing building is required. And you can see that it is always an average in savings. Also, adaptive reuse often encourages additional local investment in more historic pre preservation and construction. For example, a 1936 high school in Connecticut had been vacant for more than 20 years when it was rehabilitated into the Tyler, a 70-unit mixed-income residence for seniors. The project received about $9 million in federal and state historic tax credits, low-income housing tax credits, and over $100,000 in tax rebates for energy efficiency initiatives. Here in Murray, Murray, we have the Arlington School, which represents a similar opportunity for either low-income housing or market-rate housing for hospital staff due to its prime location. Historic preservation in Murray will also benefit our local economy. Historic and smaller scaled city blocks have a higher concentration of local businesses and non-chain restaurants and retailers and boast significantly more jobs per commercial square foot than new larger buildings. With attractive buildings, spaces, and other desirable attributes, historic districts attract small businesses which provide convenience, local jobs, and are the source of commercial vitality. Dollars spent in these local businesses typically stay local and are recirculated into other local businesses and new job opportunities for locals. And if local business is important, startup and young businesses are even more so. Almost all new job creation comes from new businesses who often choose to locate in historic districts where the physical location can be a reflection of the quality and character of the goods and services that they sell. As I mentioned, living and working in areas which are compact, walkable, and rich in history and beauty is becoming increasingly popular. A density of historic districts is fundamental to the city planning, infrastructure development, and social living that millennials seek. Attracting a young, educated workforce can help Murray attract and retain the businesses that allow our city to grow and prosper. A recent survey found that 44% of millennials surveyed wanted to live in historic character-rich neighborhoods. National home buying trends back this up. Nationally, despite making up only 34% of home buyers, millennials account for 59% of all buyers of houses built before 1912, and 43% of buyers of houses built between 1912 and 1960. Homeowners in historic homes also often experience increased property values and reduced foreclosure risk. Creating a local historic district is a very powerful tool residents can use to secure personal property. It opens the door for substantial state and federal tax credits and additional grant funding. For example, as you can see in these charts here, in Utah, the average value for all single family houses in Salt Lake City not located in a historic district increased 36.6%. Four of the six local historic districts and nine of the 10 national registered districts had rates of appreciation greater than that of the city as a whole. There's also a public benefit. Properties in historic districts generally have an average assessed value per acre several times higher than the rest of the city. The benefits of historic preservation are many for Murray. To create healthy lifestyles, increase jobs and incomes, efficiently use our infrastructure, grow our local economy, create a positive city image, supply affordable housing, and work toward a sustainable future. Marie is filled with a unique makeup of historic buildings and neighborhoods. It tells our story. In addition to the many economic, environmental, psychological, and social benefits, we can also save the historic character that makes our community ours. One of our favorite examples of just this right in downtown Marie is the Desert Star Playhouse. The building was once considered uninhabitable in the 80s, but was fully rehabilitated into what we see today, utilizing both federal and state historic tax credits, as well as low-income housing credits and grants from the city. Even today, it is a thriving example of adaptive reuse with a successful dinner theater on the ground level and low-income housing above. There are plenty of other buildings in downtown Murray that can follow this example. To do this, we simply ask that we keep housing affordable 
by ensuring our older housing stock is maintained and occupied, support adaptive reuse projects, maintain density by incentivizing construction of smaller scale residential buildings and upzoning, help us work to remove the barriers that make historic preservation difficult, such as issues with zoning, parking requirements, financing for building reuse, and the inflexibility and complexity in, in city building energy and seismic codes. And I will now let Rachel wrap up this final piece of the discussion. Thank you. So Murray was once a model of historic preservation code that we used to have um, protections within the state. Now other communities used to look to Murray as an example um, of what, how to form their own code protections. We ask that, um, that the city allow protection codes, to, the old ones, to be reviewed and um, updated in partnership with Historic Murray First and the property-owning stakeholders. We feel like there needs to be a balance of property rights as well as um, historic property protections. We'd also like to ask that the city works with us and the city planning office to create and, and commit to a historic style guide for new construction infill um, so that we can have that harmonious feel throughout our city. Um, we, we also ask that we be included in continuing capacity in the conversations surrounding the revitalization of Block 1 downtown, um, especially the buildings of historic significance. What we have to offer is that we have several professional architectural historians and others in that are professionals in the field um, that are wonderful resources. And we also have a network of statewide wonderful resources that can be utilized. Um, we are a nonprofit and we have the capacity to be um, a, a halfway point for um, a resource for capital campaign funds because of our 501c3 status. And we continue to offer both you and the citizens of Murray uh, opportunities to learn more about historic preservation and um, be educated on that. So we thank you so much for allowing us to come tonight and, and share this with you.